More than two months after Hurricane Barrel, a local shelter in Northwest Houston is still working on repairing damage caused by the storm. Joining me now in Studio A, Shelby Rockmore with Rescued Pets Movement and her special friend Benito. Good morning to you both. Thank you so much. If you're wondering why we were chuckling as we were coming on, it was because Benito was in the process of sitting down and I had to put my foot here because he was sliding across the <laughs> studio floor. He is stunning. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for being here. So talk to us about the current need. What's going on and how people can help? Yeah, so like you mentioned, we suffered damage during Hurricane Barrel. We went into that storm really unprepared because we, um, during the derecho that came through in May, our roof was ripped oh, off. Oh my goodness. Um, and due to just all kinds of delays that were out of our control, we went into the hurricane without a roof. Um, but we are in the process of getting all of those things repaired. You can see that's our roof uh, completely gone. Um, but really our biggest need right now is we always need fosters, yeah. volunteers, and people to just support our mission in whatever capacity they're able to. We always, you know, try to shed light on the many different ways people can get involved. And of course, the gold standard is that adoption, right? Yeah. But if you can't adopt, perhaps fostering is right for you and your family. And if you can't foster, uh, donate, whether that be your time stopping by a rescue or a shelter, seeing what it is they need, offering your assistance right. or, or donating goods and, and money. Um, yeah. So there are so many different ways to get involved. How close are we to being complete with the roof? Um, the roof is done. Oh, the roof is now done. The roof is now done. Thank goodness. Um, we are now working on all of the interior damage. Uh, yes. yeah, okay. So we had floors that had to be ripped up. We have all of our insulation and our dog general population area that had to be ripped mm -hmm. out. Um, so we're really close though. We're probably about three to four weeks from being completely done. Um, but we still always, even without hurricane damage, we always need fosters and volunteers. Yeah. And just like you mentioned, if you're not in the um, position to adopt right now, fostering with us is a great option. It's usually about two to three weeks. You get to take home a dog like Benito. Um, he's my personal foster. And um, the best part about fostering for RPM is that you do not have the opportunity generally to adopt these animals. Okay. So if you have a spouse or a partner or a roommate that's like, we can't have any more pets. Right. Don't worry, you can't keep these pets. All of our animals go to Colorado to get adopted. Okay. Um, there's a shortage of adoptable pets in Colorado and some other northern states, um, but it's a short-term gig and we provide all the supplies needed and it's just a really good time. We, I have so much fun fostering. Like. When you say it's a short, yeah, absolutely. It's so <laughs> rewarding and if you can do it, definitely try it. Uh, a, a lot of people ask, well, well how long, when you say short-term, yeah. how long does that mean? Yeah, so normally it's two to three weeks, the good thing though is even if that animal is not set to transport, let's say you've only got a weekend where you can foster. Mm -hmm. You can bring that animal back. We have a facility as well. We prefer them to be in foster homes, but if for any reason, let's say that the dog is too hyper or mm -hmm. you know, it just is not a good fit for your family, you can always bring that pet back, which is a really good reassurance. But usually yeah. until transport from the time you pick them up until they transport to Colorado, it's usually about two to three weeks. How, how many animals are within RPM? Um, right now, about 400 per year. We save seven to eight thousand. Um, we're the biggest transport rescue organization, and we save the most animals from Bark, the city of Houston shelter. Um, and dogs like Benito. Benito is on the euthanasia list, which means that he was set to be put yeah. down for no reason besides space. Mm -hmm. um, and he's a great dog. He's he's been nothing but wonderful. And um, dogs like Benito and tons of cats just deserve a chance. And all they need is a short-term place to stay until they can head up north. Beautiful, he is Benito, <laughs> baby. You know, my heart breaks for you guys. The work that you do, the work that people within this, you know, within animal advocacy and animal welfare, it is, it's, it's, it's work that never ends. Yeah. There's yeah. no light at the end of the tunnel per se. Yeah. And especially here in Houston. Absolutely. Um, and then to be hit with first the derecho and then the hurricane. Yeah. Talk to us about the resilience and if there are any silver linings in, in having gone through what you've dealt with the past few months? Yeah, so there's a lot of good things that have come out of this. We have been able to find some more fosters from this, just from that big push. Yeah. Um, and also there was structural damage to our building that was not revealed until um, the roof was ripped off. We have a really old building. It used to be a comedy club um, and there was structural purlin damage that really could have the whole building, quite frankly, could have, uh, it, it could have been a really big safety issue yeah. had we not found out about it. Um, so that 
that was a really big silver lining. Um, all these new people that have come in to help us have yeah. been really wonderful. Um, and I just think opportunities like this where we get to tell people about the work we do has been really wonderful. So, so. really coming out stronger yes. on the other side. Yes, it's really shown resilience. And you know, like when we went into Hurricane Barrel, we didn't have a single animal in the facility yeah. because all of our fosters stepped up to take all those animals mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. um, it's just really wonderful to see all the people that really care about the work that we do Absolutely. and care about you know dogs like Benito. I mean, there is a community out there. It's just finding those folks. And oftentimes, too, it's, it's people want to get involved. They want to help out. They just don't know where to start, yeah. how to start. And so we're making it really easy for you. Uh, you know, stop by, uh, say hello. How can people get involved through your organization? Yeah, so we are on Facebook, Instagram, pretty any, much any social media that you'll find. Um, and you can also go to our website, rescuedpetsmovement.org. If you would like to foster, you'll go to rescuepetsmovement.org forward slash foster. To volunteer, it's forward slash volunteer. Okay. So. And just to have a conversation, hit you guys up on, on yep. uh, social media. Anywhere you can uh, do a social oh, media account, we've got it. one. Well, you'll always have a friend <laughs> here. Uh, Benito is on his way up to yep. Colorado? He heads out on Thursday. Okay, so. so if people here in Houston are watching or, or all across the country, if they are interested in adopting him, mm -hmm. does he already have his forever home up in Colorado? He does not. He's okay. headed to our rescue partner, Animal Friends Alliance, okay. and um, he will be available for adoption there. And they might even already have him listed. A lot of our animals oh, are pre-adopted. He's going to love that fresh air up in Colorado, right, bud? Especially with that coat. Bye-bye humidity. <laughs> yes. Well, we so much appreciate you stopping by. Um, like I said, you always have a friend here, so whatever you appreciate need. Appreciate that. Thank uh, you. Come in and say hello. See you later, buddy. <laughs> Benito.